Alrighty, hey everyone, what's up, it's the Emperor Pro here, and welcome back to another episode of the RPG Maker Ultimate, or MZ rather, Ultimate Coding Tutorial Series, where it's trying to be ADHD friendly because I have ADD as well, and I understand exactly how uh, difficult it can be to pick up on things. However, I'm also trying to make this in a way that appeals to people without ADD as well. It has been a task, but nonetheless, I think we're onto something. So, today, uh, we will be utilizing the scene that we did before, but we're not going to be using any windows. Instead, we're going to delete all the window classes here that we have, and the data object as well. Alrighty, so, we're going to start making use of sprites. Now, RPG Maker already has a sprite class that is a... It's a sort of... It's a child of the pixie.sprite class. And we're going to be making use of RPG Makers. So to make a, a simple little sprite, it's pretty easy. You just simply do... We'll just do this, for example, for now. Let my sprite equals new sprite. But we need to give it... Oops. We need to give it a bitmap as well. So new bitmap. You know what? Let's do 320 by 320. So let me go ahead and go over this. The sprite takes an argument, which is a bitmap. Now, we're using new bitmap right here, which is basically just an empty image, and we're defining the width and height. However, in a few moments, we will be actually passing a real sprite over to the my sprite instead of it just being an empty image. But, so we want to add this to the scene by doing this add child, the, uh, oops, my sprite. Now, to actually draw something, since we're using a bitmap, we're just going to do my sprite dot bitmap dot fill rect this is the rectangle thing it allows you to draw like a little square so we're going to draw it at zero zero and we're just going to fill the image so we can just can do 320 320 and then let's give it a color so rgba 255 for the red value zero for the green 150 for the blue and 0 0.5 for the alpha once we did that we go to our project here, and we launch our little scene. As you can see, we have a little purplish semi-transparent square. You can't really notice that it's semi-transparent because of the black background, but if you change scene base to, change, uh, to scene menu base, it will get a copy of the background here, and then you can kind of see how it's semi-transparent this way. But we're not going to be going into scene menu base yet, but I did that just to show you the thing is working. So what does the sprite class do? Well the sprite class effectively holds values like X, Y, scale, rotation, all the fancy stuff that you're going to be using for sprites. Uh, we also have a set frame option which allows us to crop the sprite into certain area like anywhere we want. We'll go ahead and use something that's already a part of the of the graphics. So we're going to make use of RPG Maker's Image Manager class. So if you go to RMMZ Managers, you will see we have Image Manager. If you search Image Manager, it, is, it should be on line 846 or somewhere around there. Uh, I think uh, the auto formatter that I had probably formatted it, but just look for Image Manager. And you'll see all the different functions we have here. We have Load Animation, Load Battleback, Load Battleback 2. Basically, it's load and then whatever the name of your category is, um, except no underlines and uh, just make sure your capital letters are correct. So SV actor, side view actor, which is what we're going to be using, uh, is load capital S and then capital A as well. So in other words, we're going to do this dot actor equals new sprite. Now, instead of new bitmap, we're going to do image manager dot load sv actor like so remember capital letters are critical i cannot stress that enough if you make one little typo that's it <laughs> the whole thing will not work basically and there's actually a good reason for that it's not it's not purposely there to annoy you it's it's there for well important reasons and you'll i want i'll let you discover that i'll let you discover why it's important uh, as you develop your coding skills so now we need to pass the image name so let's take a look at SV actors here. We want to pass actor one one. We're going to be using this dude. So actor one one. Make 
not without the .png, make sure you have the name of the file. So the name of the file minus the extension. In this case, actor11. It should automatically uh, fill in the rest. Now we do this dot add child again without a capital H. This dot actor. Now when we go into our Z code, we can see we have our sprite sheet here. Which is cool. You know we can we can do all kinds of stuff with it. We can do this dot actor dot angle. Here, you know what we'll do it this way. Plus plus. We'll do it an update. So you can mess around with the angle, which is the rotation. So as you can see, boom, boom, boom. But it's not quite rotating in the way that you would expect, right? That is where we are going to do set origin. So setting the origin uh, basically sets the point of rotation and the point of scaling for the sprite. So we're going to set it at the midpoint. And to do this, we're going to do this dot actor dot anchor dot set and then 0 0.5 this has two values you can do X and Y separately if you want or you can just do one argument to apply to both <coughs> so by doing that he will now rotate from the center so there he's rotating from the middle point of the graphic which is exactly what we're looking to do you may also notice that now he's slightly off screen right so we need to move him Let's move into the middle of the screen. Let's do this dot actor dot x equals graphics dot width divided by two. And we're gonna do the same thing for the y. Graphics dot height divided by two. Change that. And now, because we have the anchor set, the center of that sprite will be in the middle of the screen. So you don't have to like subtract by half the width or height and all that stuff. It should automatically center it for you. Now, how do we make little frames out of this? Well, to make frames, it's actually pretty simple. We do this dot actor dot set frame. And then we set the source X. And let me go ahead and open up GIMP so I can uh, so I can explain this pretty well. Well, as well as I know how, anyway. The source X is the start position that you want to crop from. And the source Y is the start Y position. As you can see when I'm drawing this little square here for selection, the top left corner that's your source X and source Y. So if we were to give it the same values as this, 17, 18, 150, and 127, then the ending result would be this right here. This is what the image would now become. So we want to make sure we're getting an accurate result. So to do that, we're going to actually open up. So how many frames horizontally are there? And we can figure this out by counting the amount of copied actors. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there are 9 sprites horizontally, right? So we want to take the image width and we want to divide that by 9. So 576 divided by 9 is 64, as you can see. What is happening? My mouse just lagged for a second. So our start X should be zero and our width should be 64. And let's do the same thing with the height. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six. So the height is 384. So divided by six equals 64. So our width and height of each sprite is 64 by 64. By doing this, we can now properly do some math. We're going to write a function that will automatically get this for us in case you are using a different image for your testing to make everything a lot easier. So we're going to get calc size. We're going to do uh, or rather make a function called calculate size. And just for practice, we're going to make this async. It's, it's not needed. Uh, async is not needed, but uh, we haven't done much async. So we're going to go ahead and do it this time. So we're going to pass two arguments, width and height. And from there, we're going to do return an array. So width divided by nine and height divided by six. Now, just in case this ends up with unrounded numbers, there is a way you can use Pixie.js to automatically round the values out and whatnot. Um, that is round pixels option, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna take, we're gonna, we're actually gonna make use of the math function. Uh, the math, well, math is more of an object in JavaScript. 
So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to go to the top of the script here. We're going to do const min equals math.min, like so. Const max equals math.max, like so. And const floor equals math.floor. And one more, const round equals math.round. So this basically allows us to type the simple function instead of typing math dot for every time and it cleans it up a little bit. So we're going to do floor width divided by nine and floor width or height divided by six as our result. So I'll let you guys uh, check that out real quick. Feel free to pause and do whatever you need to do. If you need to rewind, have at it. Alrighty, so continuing on. Now that we have our size calculation, we know about what to do uh, with our multipliers. So, instead of using this.actor.setFrame, we're going to write another function that will do it all for us. So, we're just going to go set frame. We'll just call it the same thing. This, we're going to pass the actor and x and y. Now, instead, here's the interesting part. Instead of passing source width and source height, we're going to rely on the function we just wrote. So we can do this dot calc size, actor dot width, actor dot height, dot then, and then we're going to pass a value here. We're just, we'll just call the value f. So f is basically the value that gets returned by the async function here. So this is effectively the dot then, everything that we're going to write in this section will take place after this is done calculating and the rest of the code underneath it can still process. That's the point of asynchronous code, as we mentioned before. Uh, although I did really hardcore derp, um, I did not know that you did not need to return a promise. <laughs> so that goes to show you, like, no matter how much you know about code, you're almost always going to be doing something incorrect <laughs> or sloppy. So don't feel bad if you end up doing something that was, like, really derpy. Uh, matter of fact, Dreamer, a friend of mine, and a really excellent coder as well, he uh, was having an issue with one of his async functions. And what it turns out that his argument here, in our case, is f, well, that ended up being the same name as a variable. So, then, so it was overriding the things that he was trying to call. Um, it's really, really simple to make a mistake, um, so don't feel bad if you do. Uh, however, the async thing, that was part of my ADD. Uh, I did not understand. Um, I didn't like have enough study, I guess, in async, but yeah. So in other words, um, like I said, though, just don't be afraid if you make any mistakes. Don't, don't be ashamed of yourself. Don't get upset because it will very, very, very often <laughs> happen. And it's totally okay. Just like make sure you have a punching bag next to you because you're probably going to be raging a lot. All right. Anyway, back to being serious here. So f is going to be the values of this. So it's going to be an array, and it's going to have two values. The first value is going to be the result of width divided by 9, and the second value is going to be the result of height divided by 6. So we're going to use x and y as the frame number and not actual exact coordinates. So how we're going to do that is pretty simple. We're going to do x times equals f0. There we go. x times equals f0. And we're going to do the same thing with y, except f1. So y times equals f1. So then we're going to do actor.setFrame, x, y, f0, f1 as our arguments. So I will let you take a look at this code here. Feel free to pause it and do whatever you need. All right, now that you've done that, we are going to do this dot set frame this dot actor and then we're gonna display frame number one one so this frame here one wide one down one x one y there we go so we do this and when we launch our game in theory it should work right off the bat it does not that's okay so when something doesn't work uh, it's a good idea to console log the values so we're gonna do console.log x y Instead of editing this out and then like coming back to the fix, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do some debugging because I feel like that's important as well. So X and Y are still zero. So our problem is we need to set a max value for 
the x and y. Uh, so we need to make sure that x and y are at least 1. So our x and y values were 0, 0. Let's check our f values. Though, okay, those are also... That is an issue. Okay, and that is because I derpingly did actor.width instead of actor.bitmap.width. So it needs to be actor.bitmap.width, actor.bitmap.height when we're using the calc size. All right, so that's how you set a frame. But how do we animate something? Well, we can animate something by creating an array. So we're going to do this.animation is equal to, and then we'll have a couple of entries here. And each array will have another array, <laughs> which maybe sounds confusing, but... So basically, uh, this dot animation value of zero would be another array that contains the X and Y. So we'll do zero for the X and one for the Y. The next frame will be one for the X, one for the Y. The next frame will be two for the X, one for the Y. And we'll go back to one, one. So one for the X, one for the Y. So next we need to define a speed. We can do this by doing this dot animation speed equals Let's, let's define a frame rate. Best way to do this is to do 60 divided by the frame rate that you want. So let's say we want the sprite to animate at 15 frames per second, right? So we'll do animation speed equals 60 divided by 15. You don't want to do floor or round on this, by the way. So now in our update, instead of having our set frame here, we're going to put our set frame in the update and we'll get back to that in just a second. Let me double check and make sure this is correct. Ah, yes. So we're going to need a value called this.animationTick. Yeah, let's just call it this.tick for short. Equals zero. All right. So we're going to do this.tick plus equals this.animationSpeed. Then if this.tick is greater than or equal to 60, this.tick equals zero. And we're going to set the frame. Now, how are we going to know which index to call? To do that, we need a frame. So this dot frame equals zero. So instead of one one for the set frame, we're going to do this dot animation, this dot frame, like so. And then we're going to do this again. And then after the set frame, we're going to do this dot frame plus plus. Finally, we're going to do one more if statement. If this dot frame is greater than or equal to this dot animation dot length, this dot frame is equal to zero, like so. You don't need a bracket here or a curly brace because we're just having a single thing. And as long as you have like a single uh, command, then you don't really need to do a curly brace here. So I'll let you guys pause that and check that out. I made a mistake again. So in the this dot animation this dot frame, you're gonna want to do zero for the x and one for the Y. There you go, that is the fix code. There we go. So you can't really see the animation because I chose some really bad framings, but let's just change, uh, let's change the Y position to zero. So zero, 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 zero. Like so. Once you do that, we reload it. And there we go. Now you can see he is bobbing up and down. Pretty cool, huh? You now have an animated sprite that you are able to display at will and change the animation speed of said sprite and all that jazz. But for now, that's going to be it. So we'll just do this dot actor dot angle plus equals 60 divided by 30. So he's going to spin at 30 frames per second, just for fun, before we leave. Okay, no, this is not Vine Sauce. But yeah, as you can see, he's still animated, and he's spinning. He's a happy little sprite. Thanks for watching. And now he's stuck upside down because I paused this thing. All right, bye guys.